Okay, I'm here live with Natasha Sheehan, fondly known as Tippy Toe Girl on Instagram. So fun. I'm so thrilled that so many of you decided to show up for this. As you're hearing things, if you have any additional questions to what we're covering, feel free to type them in the chat box. And I will go ahead and ask Natasha those questions as they come up. We had a lot of really great questions already come in through Instagram, so we'll go through as many of those as possible. And like I said, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. So Natasha dances with San Francisco Ballet. I'm gonna let her give us a little bit more background as far as her dance journey and where she is now. So I actually, uh, I actually started dancing a little later than most people um, compared to dancing at like two years old or four years old. I actually started when I was 10 and a half. So, um, in the beginning, it was really, really hard to catch up to my peers that were my age. And being at 10 years old and being in the class with a bunch of six-year-olds, so it was definitely very hard to not get discouraged. But um, I always wanted more and was always craving more. So like, I kept jumping around at all my local ballet studios in the East Bay here. And it wasn't until I was at um, one studio, Contrapasta Ballet, um, where the girls were going to go over to San Francisco Ballet School. Um, they were going to audition there. So I was interested. And so I kind of auditioned when I was 11. And I got accepted into the school. And I've been there ever since I joined the company. And I've been in the company now for this is my second year as a Porta Ballet member. So yeah, that was kind of my my journey. And I would say like most most of my training is at the San Francisco Ballet School, with the exception of other summer intensives. Yeah. That's amazing. So do you feel comfortable there having been there for so long? Yeah. And it was really great to get to grow up with all the diff all of my teachers and um some some students it was also interesting to see uh through the years like different people come and go and to still be there so mm -hmm. <laughs> what's your favorite ballet to perform Oof, that's a hard one um I've got to say, probably when we did Sleeping Beauty this season, that Aurora was um, always one of my dream roles as a little. And I'm, I'm very, very fortunate that I actually got to perform as Aurora for the student matinee show. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't the third act, Pas de Death. But still, it was um, life-changing that I got to finally perform even like a little part of my dream role. Absolutely. That was, that was that's definitely one of my favorite ballets. And also, um, Giselle is definitely one of my favorite ballets and favorite roles. For the yeah. Eric Brun competition, I... I, uh, me and my partner, Angelo Greco, who's a principal in the company here now, um, we performed the Giselle Pop. So that was also really, really special to my heart because it was always a dream of mine to dance that. And I hope one day to maybe get to dance as Giselle in the full production one day. And also, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet, mm. another, another dream role. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You have time. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, more, I'm definitely more of a story ballet person. Yes. I love, I love the neoclassical works and the mixed repertory programs, but definitely 
um, the full length story ballets are my favorite. Yeah. It's nice when they're, I like when there's a story behind it. Too. I think as a character, it's nice to develop something in that way. Mm -hmm. Cool, we have questions. I'm gonna go for one of them just because it applies to what we already talked about. She asked if you have any advice for late starters. Any advice for late starters? Let me see. Um, one, don't get discouraged. That's the biggest thing. And two, like it's it's never really too late. If you have, mm -hmm. I say, if there's a will, there's a way. It, like if you have the passion and the drive to pursue, yes, it's going to be hard, but that's also, that's the um, that's kind of the journey. Um, yeah, I say, just go for it. Yeah. yeah. I think you gain some strength from feeling oh, yeah. like you have something to work through, you know? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So how did you get into healthy eating? Hmm. Um, so when I, I was, uh, I was never, I don't know, it, 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 when I went to, a summer program and I was with a bunch of girls who um they all have a lot faster metabolisms and I would continue to eat the same things that they do that they could get away with but then there's a certain point when puberty hits and all of a sudden oh I can't get away with eating a certain way like that um and so I kind of transitioned into healthy eating more because I don't know I got so interested and fascinated about um, nutrition and healthy eating. And when I started slowly introducing things, I didn't miss the junk food and the, the all the sweets and cakes and things. When it, and I just, yeah, I didn't miss them anymore. And I find when I transitioned into this lifestyle, my taste buds also changed as well so that was a big part of it. Um, but I really I got into nutrition more liked the way that my body felt when I started eating more nutritious foods and less processed foods and my energy was better and my like I didn't have too many skin problems when I was younger, but whatever I had, they, they cleared up like instantaneously when I changed my uh, diet. Um, but the way I kind of trans learned and read about is that certain like diets and healthy eating won't work if you just stop and do everything at once. Like I kind of did things gradually like I um, took dairy out of my diet first, and then I I liked how it I made it made me feel like not having dairy anymore. Um, and then I think it was like a year later when I cut out like gluten. So that's like the biggest mistake that people make is they will cut everything out at once, and then they'll have other health issues because of it, and it. And then it won't last kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I find it's better to go in gradual, like a slower process. Um, things like that. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I think you're, you're totally right. In order to sustain it, you definitely have to go in more of a gradual way. Right. But then also you're right on that. If you do all of it at once, you'll have reactions mm -hmm. that might feel bad yeah but it's just kind of a shock to your system exactly it's shocking your system and yeah your body will freak out that way <laughs> yeah no absolutely so how do you categorize the way that you eat now so i guess the way that i eat now i kind of went through different i tried the different um diet lifestyles like for a while I was vegetarian and then 
for a while I was pescatarian, which is where you're mostly vegetarian, but you eat seafood, but not meat mm -hmm. still. Um, but then when I talked to my doctor, she was saying that at least like when I'm dancing, it's, it's definitely harder to, um, protein sources. So she told me to at least add like chicken, things like that. Um, so now I guess there's this kind of diet that's called the vegan diet. It's like vegan with, with spell with a P. Yeah. And it's like a combination of both the vegan and paleo diets. So in the paleo diet, the emphasis is on whole foods and not too much processed food. Um, no dairy, no grains, slash gluten. Um, and kind of like paleo, like the like how the cavemen used to be basically, right. like nothing with uh, if it is processed, nothing with more than like five ingredients or something like that, um, and no refined sugar. And then vegan, obviously, no animal products, and mostly all your food is coming from plants or um, nuts and seeds and things like that. So I kind of. I, with the pea diet is kind of like a, a combination of both. So that way you can reap the benefits of both diets. So I thought that was fantastic and I love that. But um, I kind of not necessarily like to label my diet. Now I kind of, I still follow majority of the thing, kind of paleo vegan lifestyle. But I also kind of listen to my body and find like what works for me and what certain foods work for my kind of body. Um, and yeah, I find it's really important to maintain that relationship between like mindful eating and listening to your body. And and also the biggest thing that I tell people when to ask me for nutrition advice or what I eat is that really what may work for me won't necessarily work for you. So it's kind of my diet and lifestyle has kind of changed based on trial and error pretty much and like seeing what works. Okay, that didn't, that certain food didn't work or eating that or drinking that didn't work for me, but may work for someone else. It's just, it's totally, it's all trial and error and seeing what works for you. I find. Natasha, it's like you're in my head, honestly. <laughs> like this is all the advice that I give to dancers. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a much longer time to get there, <laughs> but it's being flexible, not labeling yourself is awesome because I think that as your life goes on, things have to evolve as well. Exactly, yeah. But definitely knowing too that just because the vegan, paleo vegan is working for you doesn't necessarily mean that all the dancers watching today should go and adopt the same thing. Right. Exactly. So that's great. I love it. And I'm gonna check comments. Go ahead. And actually, I I was vegan for a short time, and that's when my doctor told me to start adding other proteins from like sustainable animals and fish. But the reason I there's many different reasons for people to go vegan, whether it's for um, diet or in my case, the reason why I would want to maybe after dancing become vegan again is because of, for me, I've always loved the ethical side of being vegan mm -hmm. because I, I just love animals too much. And I maybe watched a little bit too many um videos about the food industry it just made me sad that way so it's definitely hard sometimes and i kind of um yeah it's finding the struggle between like wanting to do what i believe in but also feeling my body so that it will keep running smoothly mm -hmm. so that's one of the biggest struggles I think. yeah no for yeah. sure but it sounds like you're finding a good balance. Yeah, definitely. That's, yeah. I love finding 
balance. And also, like, I, I try not to deprive myself of certain things. Like, you know, everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, let me check comments. So this is a good question from Claudia. She asks, what is your food routine? So like, when do you cook, go to the grocery store and, you know, like a meal plan or whatever you might do considering your busy schedule. Right. Um, so during like a, a rehearsal slash performance week, I won't really have a lot of time to cook meals during the day so a lot of times what i'll do is actually um work monday all the way through the weekend i mean not monday we work tuesday to sunday and so monday is our day off so a lot of times i will there's the the popular thing called the monday meal prep kind of mm. thing and I, so what i'll do is i'll make it kind of like plan out my meals that if, if not make them ahead of time on Monday because that's kind of like my only day to really have time to um, to make meals and figure out what I'm gonna eat things like that um, so Monday is kind of it's hard to only have one day off sometimes to rest but also do errands like grocery shopping and things like that um but some, i usually try to do, do the best that i can um so I, yeah i'll usually go grocery shopping on monday and then sometimes if it's like a slower week like this week for me i'll actually have time to come home and make dinner which i've been loving and having like a warm meal um, but usually we'll have class in the morning at 10 and then sometimes, and like, depending on how long our performance is get back, I can get back within the day, um, like around like 10, 30, 11, sometimes later, depending on how long the ballet is. Mm -hmm. um, so, and a lot of times during the rehearsal performance day, we we do get a lunch break, but a lot of times I find from what I've tested is, is I do better when I just snack on little things throughout the day. Um, so, Cause then I, me personally, I don't like to dance on like a super full stomach. Yeah. Um, like snacks, whether it's like cut up raw vegetables, like uh, carrots and celery and cucumber and bell peppers and things like that. Um, what's nice about them is they're, yeah, they're high in fiber and they have a lot of water content um, that way. So they'll keep you fuller with low calorie and, and higher volume foods. Um, and then sometimes I'll have like some nuts or seeds or something like that. And sometimes with my the vegetable oh, like hummus or something for a little um, healthy plant-based protein and carb source. Um, what else? Or, or sometimes I'll have like a piece of fruit depending on how I'm feeling. Um, and I know someone asked me like, if I snack or do like two meals a day. And I, right. I, I've tried both like where either having like three bigger meals or six smaller meals, but I find I kind of just listen to my body and eat when I feel hungry instead of sticking to specific like three meals a day or six meals. So I kind of, I, I try to eat at least like three hours or something. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think for a lot of dancers, it ends up working out better to have smaller snacks during rehearsal times. You know, when you don't yeah. have a lot of time to eat, it's not fun to try to shove it in. Yeah, and you want foods that are going to be more like easier to digest versus right. That's 
least thing you want to worry about when dancing is like having to digest your food. You, know, you just right. want to worry about your, your dancing and having energy to dance instead of having energy to spend on digesting your food. Right. Exactly. I'm going to look back at some of the questions we already had come in. Okay. Um, let's see. How about some exercises that you do before class? Hmm, exercises to do before class. So actually, well, what's your pre-class routine? Pre-class, I usually the first thing I do when I get into the studio is I, um, I like to roll out all of my muscles with like I have one here with like a roller, mm -hmm. um, to like release it band like on the legs back and calves and quads and things like that um and then i also before class i have this little like lacrosse ball and i like to use that to release um my calf muscles and the psoas mus muscle muscles which i found like only recently discovered that you could release it when i joined the company yeah. i didn't that was kind of like a, a thing to do. And once I started doing it, it was like night and day, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never done this before, right? Um, and so I, I, yeah, so I usually spend like a little bit of time doing that. And then after I've rolled out um, a little bit, I have a little, I do like some abdominal and core exercises along with the obliques to kind of like warm up my center before class so that way I can it's easier for me to be on my leg mm -hmm. and feel more center um, and also also do exercises for like upper back exercises lower back exercises um more for stability um uh strengthening inner thigh exercises I like to be pretty warmed up prior to class, just because it like a couple of, you know, more than a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I, it was like a week before a summer intensive and I was taking an open class somewhere and I was running late. And so I, what, without thinking, I just started stretching like normal mm -hmm. and, and that's how I, without warming up or anything, and that's how I injured my groin muscle. Oh no. So, well, ever since then I've learned that I always make sure I'm really, really warm before class and before I do any stretching at all. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, so after I do like my kind of Pilates warm up, um, I'll do like some little stretching, not too much because I've, uh, learned from the past that it's better learn from other teachers it's better to do your stretching after class when you're the most warm yeah and yeah because that's the, the safest in yourself like, um and so that that's kind of like my pre-class warm-up kind of i i personally like to get class and have at least an hour before class to really like have like a nice warm-up mm -hmm. also I treat it like a almost like a meditative process of warming up I'm usually the first one in the studio and I like to have that kind of time for myself so that's kind of like my pre-class I love it I like that you're taking that time for yourself like you said meditative is a nice way to start the day mm -hmm. and i always like to listen to music when i'm warming up too to kind of get more in my zone yeah i love that so chantal asked any tips for getting better at eating mindfully or being in tune with your body hmm. so that's kind of like what i was talking about before about yeah, to listen to your body and to nutritional diet and 
based on just trying different things. Because how, how I actually discovered and whatnot is I just, I, I read a, like anything and everything I could and I kind of like took little pieces from everything I read. So I find, um, first and foremost, I would talk to a doctor or a nutritionist. Um, and then from there, you can kind of gauge the, what works for you and also research, 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 I find um, very beneficial to developing like a more in, intimate, um, mindful way of eating that way. And also, yeah, everything in moderation. Do you have a favorite book on nutrition and mindful eating? I like the, um, there's a couple of the, there's, well, there's this one book that's actually, it was, it came out in the 80s, but, and a lot of stuff has changed since then, but there are a lot of um, things that I liked in it, like the food, food for life. Mm -hmm. that's a good one um and like i talk about how it's best to eat fruit on an empty stomach or let i don't only at a certain amount a certain point in the day and um how long to wait after eating a certain food group and also what i was really interested after reading that book was learning about food combining mm -hmm. like what like what kind of food go well together and what kind of food don't go well together like um like carbohydrates and fats and proteins and what works together um what other books do i like there's there's lots there's another book that i have it's called the probiotic promise yeah all about like probiotic foods and um, the importance of like, importance of them and how you should incorporate them in your diet and things like that. Um, a lot of times, I find it's hard sometimes with with certain books because um, the it's constantly changing frequently over the years. So what may have been right then may not be as right now, depending on current research. Um, right. Right. So, yeah. But, uh, so hard. but a lot of times I like to read little snippets of different articles on from the web. Yeah. No, you're right. Nutritional information has been evolving and changing yeah, and exactly. different books have different influences from industry and science and all yeah. of that. So. Yeah, the hard thing is like figuring out who to believe and who's right and wrong. But really, in reality, no one's right or wrong. It's, it's, all, it's all a matter of your body. Yep. That's why that experimentation is so essential. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. So how do you, you know, I know that you said when you started eating more healthfully, you weren't as interested in, in the sweets and candy and things like that. But for someone who's kind of like stuck on that, how do you think they could get into a healthier eating plan? Hmm. I find, well, maybe if, if like, like if you slowly started taking it out of your diet or adding like different, like more vegetables and fruits and more of the junk type food, then I found that, um, when you do it that way then slowly your trip has changed and you don't have as many cravings for that kind of food um but also i find now 
in this day and age, there's been a lot more um, companies and product brands that, that have been coming out with healthier alternatives for, for um, junk food and sweet mm -hmm. food that are at least a little bit if you wanted to maybe transition into you know, trying that and, and you'll sometimes you'll discover hey this isn't so bad or I might even I might even like this more than what I used to eat kind of thing. Um it's actually funny in my my family sometimes I'll I'll have like a like I'll have I'll get for a treat like a vegan ice cream or something like that that's made from like coconut milk or something and sometimes maybe my sister would want to try it and she'll find that she actually likes it better right. than regular ice cream but I find like when when people try the more healthier alternatives they'll like not only will it sometimes um cover that craving for them but it'll also make feel less icky or less uh gross feeling mm -hmm. yeah i think you're right i feel like the after effect of those healthier versions of like their treats, you actually feel mm -hmm. good. Whereas yeah. if you pay attention when you're eating those, you know, chemical laden or artificially sweetened sorts of things, afterwards you just don't feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you have some good recipes on your blog for that kind of stuff too, right? I do, yes. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm hoping to try and get a new post up because it's been a little while. It's it's hard sometimes during the season. We get so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little like a little escape for me and yeah. Actually now that you're talking about that, I, I'll definitely get on that soon. <laughs> okay, good. Now everyone will have an extra reason to go visit your blog and check out the recipes. Something new is coming. Mm -hmm. Cool. What motivates you to continue having a healthy lifestyle? Um, well, now at this point where I am in my lifestyle, it doesn't really feel like a diet anymore. It just feels like, um, I don't know, just, it just feels like it's become a part of me and it doesn't, I don't feel like, I'm depriving myself of anything or nor do I miss anything. Um, yeah, I, I found, yeah, it doesn't feel like a diet anymore because my, the way my taste buds have changed and I, I crave like, like that. So I find, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, I don't feel like I'm, I'm missing anything um, anymore. Mm -hmm. But even when I used to, I, I get to, when I used to be more normal, I, I was never really <laughs> a kid to eat a lot of meat or junk food because, um, I was more, I just like to eat things that were more exotic. My parents used to teach me that I ate like an adult because I would eat things that kids my age wouldn't even like imagine of like eating. <laughs> um, but yeah. Awesome. Let me check questions down here. 
There's a lot of questions to manage between all the ones that came in for you. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's amazing. I know. And now the live questions. So there's a question about portion sizes and calories. Do you, how do you look at that or do you at all? Mm -hmm. I find it, in the past I've, I've tried, um, using like one of those nutrition apps like MyFitnessPal where like you can track your calories. But I found that with my kind of personality, having like a more perfectionist OCD kind of personality that having to log in my daily calories was, um, I was becoming too obsessive over it. Mm -hmm. So I, I stopped like thinking about calories and now I focus more on versus the number of calories, the number of nutrients. And if I'm eating something that comes from uh, like a processed place, um, then I make sure that it's like very few ingredients and ingredients that I can also pronounce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Um, That's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but now, and regarding portion sizes, I do follow portion sizes sometimes um, for like regarding like things that might have like, uh, might be more calorically dense, like nuts and seeds and oils and things like that. I try to stick to the recommended daily serving. Um, but with things like vegetables and fruits, I, I kind of, um, when it's coming from, yeah, I find if it's coming from the ground or a tree, I find that you, sh you shouldn't have to limit yourself from them. They find that they're so good for you that there's, there's no need to really have to worry about portion sizes. Um, but I, and also I, on the, vegan diet one of the things that's emphasized frequently is that meat is called um a condom meat so meaning like yes. the meat is like a side to the main dish which is like the vegetables and the plants mm -hmm. and um we're treating that more as a side and having the main focus on vegetables and whole foods and So, yeah, I, I, I don't really worry too much about calories anymore because I now focus more on the whole, like whole foods and like real food, like um, food in its most, most natural state. Yes. So I don't really care too much about, because even if it's, it's higher in calories, it's more beneficial than something that may be at like 100 calories but then has over 50 ingredients right yeah it kind of makes everything once you get to that place where you know what you like to make with fruits and vegetables as the focus mm -hmm. it really does make everything easier exactly awesome gina asks do you take any supplements so supplement wise, I've I've talked to my physician, my doctor, to try and figure out what I'm um, what I may be um, deficient in, and so I take um, two probiotic supplements for gut health and immune health, and I like I've read so much about probiotic foods and prebiotic foods. And that's like definitely one of the, the things that I'm the most interested in and love learning about. Um, mm -hmm. I take that and I found um, one of the, yeah, it was one of the most important things really to um, maintain a healthy diet. Um, and I also take a turmeric supplement to, especially being a dancer to help with inflammation. Mm -hmm. Actually, one, one turmeric supplement in the morning and then one midday 
And then especially like when I have a night show, I always take one before the performance to help prevent swollen feet and legs because it's it's hard on your body when you have to be dancing at like nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. that, that I found is really, really helped me being a dancer and I find is really important for dancers uh, to help with inflammation. And I also take a magnesium supplement to also help with um, muscle health. Um, and then I'll also take a vitamin D supplement because being a dancer, we're inside yeah. all day, all of our lives. So it's a given that we're going to be deficient when the recommended um, dose of vitamin D is supposed to be 15 minutes and it's hard when you're inside um, going from the studio right into the theater. So those are like kind of my, and then sometimes um, I'll take a digestive enzyme if I'm eating like a certain food that might be hard to type to digest, whether it's like a cruciferous vegetable, like um, broccoli or cauliflower or kale or something like that to kind of help with the digestion. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's really all the supplements I take because I find that I get a lot of the nutrients I need from natural foods like fruits and vegetables and um, omega-3s from the salmon and and walnuts and yeah i find I, I get a lot of my nutrients just from real food right whatever i can't get from real food i'll take or if i need that yeah filling in the gaps a little bit right, right. awesome so henriette asked she said this food you post looks so healthy and delicious but it doesn't seem like a lot considering how much you are exercising. Is that how much you really eat or are there things you don't post? <laughs> <laughs> so being the, the way that my body is, I'm actually, I'm petite, I'm short. So um, what may be a, like seem like a lot less is just because um, that's just like, the amount of food that like my body can handle but I will admit that a lot a lot of times what's hidden from Instagram is is the, the real reality of the post so a lot of times I will add like other food depending on if, I'll, if I'm still hungry and also um, a lot of times to make a more aesthetically pleasing picture you, you can only do so much to it so, right. But I do really eat what I post, but sometimes I will add other things. But most of the time, that's kind of, well, that's kind of how I got into food photography is I, I like to celebrate my meals and to celebrate them. I like to make my food look pretty. Yeah. That's how I got into that. And so, I, yes, I do really eat the things that I post. <laughs> <laughs> and then more in a and then more depending on how I'm feeling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's, um, that's funny. Cause that's something that I talk about with dancers in the dancers best body program mm -hmm. is plating your food beautifully so that you like take the time to appreciate it and like fully take it in mm -hmm. before you actually eat it. Awesome. So there are a few questions about like not overeating. Anything to add for advice with that outside of, you know, eating mindfully? Mm -hmm. I find to avoid overeating, like the one of the biggest things, really just listening to your body and um, taking time to enjoy your food and like to eat slower. So, um, you can kind of um, send the signals to your stomach, like, okay, I'm getting full kind of thing. Um, because when you when you eat faster, um, 
you're not allowing the time for your brain and your stomach to process process that you're getting full um with that uh <laughs> um yeah and, and to prevent overeating and making sure you're getting the right nutrients and kind of yeah like to to really like sometimes what i'll do while eating is even like take a bite and like close my eyes and like really like taste try to taste like each flavor and also one of the other things to prevent overeating is to not be distracted by other things to kind of like when you're eating like you're just eating you're not on your phone which sometimes i i admit i will start i will do that sometimes but i will try my best like during meal times i'll dedicate just to eating the meal or eating the snack um the other distractions uh whether it um, like watching TV or something when you're not paying as much attention. Um, and then also I find to prevent overeating, you, you put your fork or spoon down like between bites and you kind of, that'll slow it down that way. Um, but overall, the general message I would say is to just really like keeping the, the healthy relationship with your body, listening to it, and listening to the hunger um, signs. Yeah. yeah, like you said, you know, overeating or binge eating, it usually comes from either feeling deprived mm -hmm. or not getting a full nutrient profile that you need. Right, right. Yeah. Nice. What was your transition like from student to professional? Hmm. So that um, transitioning from a student into professional, it, there were a lot of similarities, but there are also a lot of differences. Um, and I was actually very lucky um, at the San Francisco Ballet School, they have the trainee program, which is that at the top of the very school, right before you can join a company. And basically, in the trainee program, we were kind of taught, um, like, kind of get a little glimpse of what company life is like while still being in the school. Mm -hmm. And being a trainee. I was fortunate enough to get to get to participate um, in some of the company rehearsals, so you can kind of experience what the atmosphere is like. Um, but the the kind of biggest shock from going from a student into professional life is that there really isn't anyone there to kind of hold your hand or help you. It's kind of um, a lot of it is you're forced to grow up a lot faster and it's kind of up to you on how, what you make of it. Um, like to be ready for a rehearsal, it's up to you to study the ballet on your own or go into a studio by yourself and rehearse that or watch the video for that ballet if you don't know it. Um, that was kind of the biggest shock is that um, there's not going to be someone there to help you along. Like if, if you if you fail, you fail because it's your fault. Or if you if you succeed, then you succeed because you worked hard to get there that way. So that was one of the biggest um, biggest changes from student to school. And yes, having a lot more responsibility. <laughs> um, yeah, and being smart and also you have a different schedule from, versus from having multiple classes a day to having multiple rehearsals a day. So transitioning that way and learning how to pace yourself and learning, um, finding times to rest your body so that you can keep working it. Um, 
in a successful way. Um, because it's it's true, and you'll you'll find you'll you'll get um, like little injuries will come on just from like a, a harder way of working and for working for. Um, that was one of the biggest things. Well, that is great. But also, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky being in the training program and getting to go to some of the company rehearsals is that sometimes um, the, some of the company dancers will help help me out. And that way, when I joined the company, I already knew some of them. So that was also, um, that helps me a lot. Made yeah. it able to transition a little easier. But um, yeah, being the, you know, the overall message is, um, from transitioning, yeah, being more independent and being more responsible for yourself was one of the biggest um, changes. Mm -hmm. I found. How do you find balance with your schedule? Balance is my schedule. It's it got to admit it, it's hard at times to find balance especially during like a crazy uh, dance season. But I try to find um, little moments for myself, um, whether it's listening to music on my own or um, just taking some time to just like to breathe or to read a book or something like that. Um, it, and, but it, it, it is hard to in the the crazy world of ballet and yeah. all the rushing around and yeah but the the maintain balance like staying in tune with your body listening whether for food or listening like whether um you might have an injury or might have something that might be an injury things like that to kind of keep you in tune yeah any final thoughts or food tips to share? Food tips to share. Um, hmm. Yeah, don't be afraid to to try new things. You may be surprised. I love that. <laughs> oh, we have one more question. Oh, we have one more, but let's do one more. Um, how about cross training? Anything else that you do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, so on, the, um, we're actually very lucky in the company. We have an in-house Pilates instructor. So a lot of times, what I'll what I'll do is in between my breaks or before a show, I'll I'll work with um, her on strengthening um, like um, core and back and because I'm actually um, I'm very lucky it's a, it's a blessing and a curse to be very hyper mobile so that that has a lot of great things in ballet but also it's that a lot harder for me to control it so that's yeah. um, like through Pilates I, I found it's a great way if you're super flexible or hyper mobile to kind of control your limbs and instead of just using um like joints and and bones to use to, to use your muscles to watch control things um, and i also like to do yoga whenever i can mm. i like to do i usually like to take a yoga class on my day off it's like it's, um it's another mind body connection um and also they in yoga there's a lot of the same um, principles like in ballet and cardio wise I'll try to go on the treadmill not run but I'll, I'll walk for as long as I can I find when I run it's a little bit too harsh for me mm -hmm. but it, it, again, it all just depends on uh, certain people um, because I the way my body's built, I tend to, to build muscle really easily, which is which is good, but also means I have to be more careful with um, 
during cross training, like I won't go on a bike just because that's how my body type is. Um, but for someone else, that may be a good a good for them. So those are kind of my cross training ways, of Pilates and yoga, mm -hmm. and and sometimes uh, going on the treadmill or even swimming when it's warmer. So. Yeah. Nice. Those are all relaxing cross training things too, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Natasha. This was really fun. I loved hearing your insights. <laughs> and so we can find you on your blog, tippytogirl.com and on Instagram at tippytogirl. Anywhere else online that people should look for you? Um, those are like my main sources, but I also have, I do have a Twitter, but I don't really use it too much. Yeah. And I, I use my Pinterest a lot. Oh, I actually cool. have a lot of my food recipe ideas and nutrition tips from Pinterest. I get ideas cool. through that way. Um, but actually funny story about how, in case people were wondering how I came up with Tippy Toe Girl or why, yeah. is I, I, I think I came up with it when I was around 11 and I've kind of kept it ever since. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, Tippy Toe Girl. Was, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> like, is your yeah. Pinterest handle the same then? I think my, my Pinterest handle is Tasia Tastic. So it's like it's like Tasha Fantastic or something. Um, okay. That, yeah, because uh, the, my the tippy tail girl was taken, so I didn't. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can share that one in the comments. So I'll uh, if you can email it to me, and then I'll share it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so, so much. And I want to thank everyone who came and joined us live. If you're new to The Whole Answer, you can check us out at thewholeanswer.com. All about health, balance, wellness for dancers and supporting you all and finding the healthiest way for you to eat. Um, I think that's all I've got. I've got some new videos coming out. I spoke with Janelle Manzi the other day. So I'll share a video with her on YouTube. I'm going to upload this video to YouTube as well shortly. Not today. <laughs> but yeah, have a great rest of your week, everyone. And thank, thank you, Natasha, so much. Thank you all. And thank you, Jess, so thank much. Thank you.